a playlist original. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Back to the Blockbuster with your hosts, Gaius and Jackson. Today, we got nothing but straight news for you guys. Had a fairly busy week coming out of Hollywood. We got some trailers to react to today. We got some updated news uh, regarding some some new releases coming out at us. And, uh, we, of course, we're back with some box office predictions for the end of the episode. So excited to jump into this with you guys this week. And, uh, Gaius, yeah, I'll let uh, let you kind of dive in and see where we want to start here um i guess we can uh we can lead with oh, the one of the bigger stories today actually it happened right before we started recording uh because james, james gunn is you know as we know is putting together his uh the new dcu uh dc universe uh you know him and co-chair peter saffron uh now that the dceu is behind them uh it's all about what's coming next um so part of that is uh casting uh supergirl uh for uh her own supergirl project or standalone movie and i'm i'm hearing that uh the character will pop up in a uh in another dc project before her own solo movie uh so we get to know her first but uh there was a they narrowed down this casting call for supergirl it was down to uh three people at one point uh, Millie Alcock, uh, Amelia Jones from Coda, and Meg Donnelly, who voiced Supergirl on the DC animated mm-hmm. movies Legion of Superheroes and Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part One. They were all in the running. They all screen tested for James Gunn. I, I, they, I heard that they were all worthy, according to you know those in the know. But uh, the person that ended up getting cast in the role is House of the Dragon actress Millie Alcock. She, she is your new supergirl you're more familiar with her than i am because i I watch house of dragon (laughs) that's right another another property you got to get on while it's hot but uh she (laughs) she was great in the episodes of house of the dragon uh that she's in so not much of a spoiler um but just to break it down a little bit house of the dragon season one takes place over several years so she plays the younger version of rhaenyra um and she's more prominent in the first i think like three episodes and then there's some flashbacks that she's also in she was great she was a standout performance i think a lot of people by the time her performance on that show was done and we were working with like the adult rhaenyra character uh, i think a lot of people were uh, missing millie alcock's performance and i I agree with that she was great and i'm excited to see it doesn't come i'm not surprised i mean i didn't know she was in the running for supergirl but um for this move in her career to come after her her uh, notoriety from her role in House of the Dragon uh, comes as no surprise. Really happy for her. Can't wait to see what she does with that role. I thought she was great in House of the Dragon. I'm sure you would think the same if you'd seen it too. She's she's great. Definitely a good up and coming talent. Yeah, um, th- this is one. Uh, you know, we we always talk about internet discourse when some when people get cast and stuff like this. <laughs> but from what I've seen, uh, people are very excited that she uh, landed the role. Um, so I mean. She was born April 11, 2000. So, I mean, I guess like, oh, wow. they have, they have, they have very, uh, the intention of who the age range for Supergirl is very intentional here. Like, they wanted a specific age, a specific type of actress. So, like, uh, you can kind of tell, like, where they're going with it. Um, mm. You know, here's uh, it's one of those things. I uh, we're reporting this because it was big DC news. I don't know where I land on the new DCU because we don't know anything about it yet. And I'm right, I, my level, my excitement level is. It's not anywhere at all. Yet. Yeah, I you know, agree uh, with that. Yep. Uh, um, um, but I, I'm happy for her because it seems like it seems from people that are familiar with like with House of the Dragon and all that that she is deserving of the role. And so I'll, I'll at least give it that. Like you know, because I don't on, really know much about her. But yeah, I haven't. I looked through her, her uh, IMDb filmography quickly just to see if I recognize her in anything else. Nothing stood out. She does have decent filmography for her age. She's been involved in some series since 2018, 2019. Um, but on the note of the, the excitement level, I, I agree with you. Mine's pretty stale because I don't know really what to expect with this series. But just a, a little snippet from that Deadline article that did pique my interest that I, I at least like on paper with the direction they're going to go with that Supergirl. This is the quote from the article. That, uh, Seth, uh, it's not Seth. Uh, a quote from James Gunn uh, at the time of the announcement. He says, 
In our series, we see the difference between Superman, who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents from the time he was an infant, versus Supergirl, who was raised on a rock, a chip off Krypton, and watched everyone around her die and be killed in terrible ways for the first 14 years of her life, and then came to Earth when she was a young girl. She's much more hardcore. She's not exactly the Supergirl we're used to seeing. I think that's a great direction for that, honestly. Yeah, so she's going to have some issues, huh? Yeah. (laughs) I think it's pretty cool. Different departure from that character. Yeah. She's, she's gonna be complicated. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I, I have, yeah, I have no like when it comes to like the super supergirl character. Um, I don't really have a lot of dog in the fight. I mean, I used nope, to watch either. the CW. I, I used to watch the CW show because I was all about the CW. Uh, you know, Air, Arrowverse TV shows. They're all I enjoyed most of them. Um, and Melissa, I think it's been Waz, uh, last name was a good Supergirl on that show. Um, and then of course in the Flash, uh, uh, we had a. Uh, Sasha Kellel played her, and she was a mm. fan favorite, but the movie itself wasn't well received. But she was, so a lot of people were hoping that he would carry her over into the DCU. But I just, I think that's just not the direction he wanted to go in, uh, right? With it, with it. Um, but she was good. I, you know, she was the only real thing I loved about the Flash. I thought she was solid, but, uh, but you know, it's I, I know it's it's kind of nice not having a dog in this fight. Or like, hey, hey, if everyone seems if everyone seems happy with Millie Alcock cast right Kuda. yeah then, cool yeah I mean, <laughs> for her. we'll see how it really goes um yeah so yeah so uh, she she's already indv is quick on it they already have that in her upcoming projects uh and i think it's slated for 2025 her first appearance yeah yeah okay. uh she they rumor has it they said she might appear first in superman legacy which will be uh you know the reintroduction to uh, Superman for the DCU, um, but they're not one hundred percent certain yet. But she will pop up in an earlier DC project before appearing in her solo feature, Supergirl: Woman of Tomorrow. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, congratulations, Billy Alcock. Uh, I, apparently, the other girls too are also deserving. They they said they would have been happy. Uh, a lot of fans said they would have been happy any way that went. Um, but uh, yeah, kudos to her. And now, uh, now she, now she's gonna be on to a lot of big things, and um, the internet judging her because it's a comic book movie, and they judge everything that has to do with comic book movies. So, <laughs> yeah. keep your head up. <laughs> Don't listen to everyone's comments. <laughs> um, I was also wrong too. She is in the f- uh, first five episodes of House of the Dragons, so she leads half okay. of that, half of that series, uh, which ended up winning the the Golden Globe for best drama series. So that's a pretty good, big accolade for her to be a, a lead yeah. in that show with all the accolades that it has. So. Yeah, looking forward to what she brings to the role. This next piece of news that we got, I really don't have, I don't know much. This is, uh, hopefully, I'm not sure what you know about it or if there is much known about it at this point, but um, you did post this today, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck uh, working on another movie together, a Netflix movie, and this time Ben Affleck is directing Matt Damon in this role? Yeah. Or do I have it backwards? Oh, he is? No, yeah, he he is, and this will be the second time he's directed him because he uh, directed him in Air. Uh, That was their last collaboration together. uh, Together. Um, but uh, they're uh, doing a it's a Netflix thriller called Animals. Uh, Matt Ben Affleck is directing it, uh, Matt Damien is set to star in it. Uh, Connor McIntyre wrote the screenplay, uh, with revisions by Billy Ray. He actually uh, that name is familiar to me because he wrote and directed Shattered Glass, which I really enjoyed. That was all the way back in 2002, <laughs> but it's a really oh, good, wow. uh, really, really good movie. Um, and they said plot, plot details are very vague, but it's said to revolve around a kidnapping, and that's all they're kind of uh revealing right now. Um, they Netflix really wanted to get Ben Affleck for this. He he had already set up, I guess, his next starring role. He's gonna be he's gonna be working on a sequel to The Accountant, and Netflix mm, knew that yes. he's gonna be doing. Yeah, Netflix knew he was gonna be doing that, and so they uh, wanted to work on a schedule with him uh, so they he could direct Animals, and they worked out something. And once I guess Matt Damon signed on, they fully worked out a schedule so he could film the account and also direct this uh this year um not much known about it but like when they collaborate together and it's usually pretty good i mean goodwill hunting being their first big thing together and yeah of course right. they won the best or best original screenplay uh oscar for that and they've did in other movies together as well dogma they're really great in dogma together really funny uh you know i think ben Affleck, i think is a good actor but i think he's found his uh calling as a director as a director yeah. yeah, most of the movies he's directed, I've enjoyed a lot, and some of them I would even say are really great. Um, and 
I'm always kind of looking forward to what he does next as director. And you know, Matt Damon's always a reliable presence too. I wish we knew mm-hmm. more about the movie. I uh, you know what it's going to oh, be about. in time, we'll get lots of notifications. Yeah. I'm sure about it. And and I think the Netflix thing too. We've talked about that in different ways. Like, oh, it's a Netflix movie. Uh, yeah, not something that's gonna not something that's gonna get a theatrical release or anything. But uh, again, though, they when they work together, it's usually magic. So I. Looking exactly. forward to what they kind of put together next. And I really liked Air. That was another movie, too. I think it just came out too early in the year in mm-hmm. 2023. I didn't put it in, like, we just did our top 10 uh, list on another episode. And it, that movie just missed mine as well. It was, oh, it was that really right? Good. Okay. I hadn't seen it yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. And I it probably would have gotten more awards attention had it been released later. But it was released so early in the year that I think it kind of lost mm-hmm. the shuffle. But um, yeah. And that was a song. Like, I still, I still ride ride for the town i like, love that movie oh that movie's <laughs> and, fantastic yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah looking forward to that whatever that might be <laughs> all we know is that it revolves around the kidnapping so <laughs> okay well, well, time will tell yeah um <clears throat> in other directing news now i think we share our feelings about this one um not i don't see any positive in this i i i don't know what the pairing is behind this. I just commented on Merck's, uh, on uh, JC's Merck with the Movies post about this because he'd also <laughs> posted on his Instagram. But yeah. Chris Rock, um, you know, famous comedian, of course. If you didn't know him before, you probably knew him after he was slapped by Will Smith at the Oscar <laughs> stage a couple of years ago. Definitely known. <laughs> Definitely oh, known no. as a comedic <laughs> actor, um, but I think he's been trying to like sort of wedge his way into more dramatic work um yeah he did fargo really... he was on, yeah oh that that's right dramatic. that's right that was, that okay. was more, yeah that was more dramatic well i guess but that's more recent i mean he's been yeah. more recently yeah the only thing that. i've seen him in that wasn't really com- comic related was spiral which i thoroughly hated oh, yeah. him in it too <laughs> so like that's kind of where my mind went when i saw this but to the point what i'm getting at is he is slated to direct a remake of a great movie that we have both seen. I really like Thomas Vinterberg's Another Round, starring Mads Mikkelsen. Um, I want to say it's a Danish movie. Um, I, I so, always, yeah. Yeah, I always want to go Swedish, but I think I think he is um, from Denmark. Anyway, fantastic movie. Mads Mikkelsen's great in it. That, that Thomas Vinterberg is a director, great. Um, but yeah, don't know why this movie is being remade. The movie only came out in 2020, I think. 2020. And, yeah, is that uh, right? Okay. It came out in 2020 and won the, the Oscar for Best International Feature yeah. Film as well as, as the right. BAFTA. Uh, it's a really it's really popular. Uh, people have seen it and uh, apparently completely fine. <laughs> it doesn't need to be remade. <laughs> I get because it's an international movie, like there's an appetite for an American remake, I guess. I always hate that trope. Very rarely do I find Hollywood is able yeah. to make a movie better when it came out in a different country. I don't see this movie being good at all. <laughs> is my takeaway. <laughs> there, really? There we go. Know. So that's my you? takeaway too. So I it doesn't feel wholly necessary. I, I enjoyed it when I saw it, and but I, I but I know there is like this tendency to take uh, international movies and repurpose them for an American audience. But sometimes when you do that, you lose uh, what makes that movie special because some of it is very specific to. Uh, it being a foreign film and not right. from here exactly. um, and and then sometimes uh here in america we think we can do certain things better <laughs> than uh than the, it, the international filmmakers and stuff so i mean i don't know I, I, it's hard for me to be optimistic it's such a weird project for him to get behind i don't know it feels like i agree really odd like i also thought at the time when it was announced because i didn't know that chris rock was such a big saw fan but i remember when he came he pitched the story for spiral and that's he went to Lionsgate and that's how he got involved with doing Spiral because he hmm. had this story that, you know, he thought would work. And I know I thought that was odd too. Like, I, I think I liked it a little bit more. Like, like I don't think it's that good, but I, it, it was fine in the moment. Uh, but you know, definitely didn't stay with me, you know, and it, it was a weird, that was a weird choice for him then. And I think this is a weird, apparently he really wants to make directing a priority, which is why this project is kind of coming together. Um, but I don't know. It's like one of those things. It's like I, we don't need it. It's so <laughs> strange. Yeah, a it's not needed. B if it's going to be made, I would not have put Chris Rock anywhere near this. Um, yeah. But for those that don't know the, so this is the description um, on IMDb for the original Another Round, and the premise is four high school teachers consume alcohol on a daily basis to see how it affects their social and professional lives. So it's sort of run as like an experiment 
um, they see a study that suggests that people who are maintain a certain level of blood alcohol percentage, like are able to, you know, I don't know, increase overall happiness or something like that. Anyway, so these yeah. four high school teachers begin experimenting with it to different effects. And it is a great, it's sort of a dramedy. Like it's got definitely some highs and lows throughout it in terms of like tone and whatnot. But I thoroughly love this movie. It's got a great dance sequence at the end. That's from out of nowhere. Mads Mikkelsen is firing on all cylinders in this movie. Yeah. Um, and the only other movie he, they paired on, I think maybe a couple movies, but they also did the movie from 2011, I believe, uh, called The Hunt, which was also great. Thomas Vinterberg, great Danish director. Mads Mikkelsen, of course, is always great. I don't know why another round's being remade, but this is what we got. (laughs) It'll be interesting to see what happens. I can just Um, picture, I know I said this to you, I can just picture like Chris Rock and like the Adam Sandler group just sitting around getting drunk at school. Like that's just like what I picture them doing, but I'm sure that will be the case. It just ends up being like grown ups. Oh. <laughs> well, essentially, that's like kind of yeah. where my mind goes. But sorry, I know you're about to say something. I, you know, oh, no, you're good. I just want just a little behind the scenes stuff. Leonardo DiCaprio is producing this with alongside Jennifer Davison. What I cool, I guess. Uh, and then and Stuart Blumberg wrote a draft of the script that they will now bring in a new writer to work on with Chris Rock. Uh, like I said, Chris Rock has made directing a priority and adds this to a universal based adaptation of King A Life, the Jonathan Egg book about Martin Luther King Jr., along with an untitled script Rock is writing that has Peter Wright's producing. So he seems like he really wants to get into filmmaking more. He has directed movies before. Uh, he directed Top Five, uh, which he also wrote and became uh, one of the biggest deals of the 2014 Toronto Film Festival, where Paramount Pictures bought worldwide. He also directed the movie Head of State. I believe he played the president in that. It's a comedy. Uh, and uh, and then he also wrote, I think I love my wife, which actually is a pretty solid uh, movie, but uh, one of a smaller one that didn't really get a lot of uh, play when it came out, but it's pretty uh, well done. Okay. But yeah, but, but very interesting that this is like what he's attached himself to. I, I was just like, when I saw the news, I, I think I just had this reaction of like, oh, but I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> I was pretty <laughs> mad. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe if it was a, uh... I don't know an original movie of his or something but just i have a soft spot for the movie that they're remaking and i just don't find it necessary only four years after it came out so yeah i don't know tom will tell how it shapes up don't imagine i will really go out of my way to see it but unless a lot of details come out that make it impossible to avoid i don't know yeah I'm still, I'm still, I'm still dying over. You might remember him by being smacked by Will Smith. If you didn't know him before, then you certainly would have after. That's for sure. Uh, all of his <laughs> list of achievements, and then he went with that. That was great. Uh, well, no doubt in a in a career look back in however many years that will. Oh, it'll, it'll be, be a, in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah. All righty, was that all the uh, actual like movie movie news? And we just have. Uh, that's right. Trailer trailers. Four uh, trailers, all March releases, I believe. Yeah, and and we haven't really covered trailers on here in a bit. It's been a while. Um, but uh we have a few to throw at you. This first one, um this is an interesting uh because there's we have a trailer for uh this first one that we're talking about, and also a very interesting thing that's going on with like the director uh not being too happy with how it's being released. So oh, uh, I don't know anything about that. So Roadhouse is uh has a trailer now uh, as we know roadhouse is, is going to be a remake of a very popular patrick Swayze 80s movie it's a total news movie uh it's a pure popcorn entertainment um, <laughs> they make fun of the, they make fun of it on family guy really well oh my too. god uh, yes, <laughs> <ever>. roadhouse. <laughs> uh, roadhouse yeah so good um uh but this is going to star uh jake john hall uh also we have a uh, conor mcgregor in the movie as well uh he's in the trailer too jesus uh, christ d- doing doing some acting uh <laughs> uh call it that. <laughs> i'm trying to say this i'm trying to say it politely um you know i i love that jake john hall much like ryan gosling is in this kind of like fun i just want to do fun movies phase of their career and it seems like this right. is what this is um which is fine. I mean, I, I don't see how, you know, there was no real big desire to remake Roadhouse. Um, but here we are and we're getting it. Um, and so for those that don't know uh, the premise of this one, oh, actually, you know what, just to uh, give you a better indication, I'll give you the premise of the original so you guys are a little familiar. Um, they are changing some things, but I guess at the, at its heart, it's gonna, you're, you're going to know that it's got Roadhouse in its DNA. Um, but 1989's Roadhouse starred Patrick Swayze, 
as a cooler at a newly refurbished roadside bar who protects a small town in Missouri from corrupt businessmen. Uh, and it's also very just violent and fun. I mean, I've seen it. It's it's it is what it is. It's a product of its time. I have <laughs> not, but I've always wanted to. It's actually been on my radar for a long time. I have a buddy that swears by this movie. It's always interested me. Just have I don't think I've ever come across it. Honestly, I would love to see yeah. it. Yeah, you know, uh, it's it's fun. I mean, like I said, it is what it is. It's a product of its time, and like yeah. it, it knows what it is. So at least enjoy it on that level. Um, the uh, remake Turns five this year. <laughs> uh, so also, maybe that's now. Maybe that might be time for us to look back. Maybe. On it. Um, um, I'm gonna look when it released. The, prim- the premise for this new one uh, a follows a former UFC middleweight fighter who ends up working at a roadhouse in the Florida Keys, where things are not as they appear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, like we say, Jake Lynn Hall is uh, in this. Conor McGregor, JD. Pardo, Arturo Castro, and Billy Magnuson, uh, directed by Doug Liman. Now that makes me uh, more, ah. uh, more like it, like I can get behind it a bit because I do like Doug Liman as a, a, a bit. A, I know I was looking at his filmography earlier, and he hasn't really had a hit in almost a decade with Edge of Tomorrow. So I, that part of I was initially I saw his name, I was like, okay, like maybe this has some potential behind it. But then I, he's done more misses than hits lately, so I don't. I don't feel as safe about it on that note. I feel like if this movie wasn't such a direct, like trying to be a remake, if it was just a little bit of a different, I think they're going a different enough direction with the, the whole MMA angle that this yeah, yeah. could be a, an original, if not derivative movie that doesn't have to be roadhouse remake. Roadhouse. Like, I think I would almost be more behind it. If that was the case, I can't, yeah. I can't let it go that it's just an, a pointless remake, but um. Sort of here's how I felt after. Oh no, you're yeah. good. No, here's how I felt after I watched the trailer. I thought I thought that I was that I would be like, oh, that looks awful. I didn't get that impression after I watched it. I was like, it looks like it could be entertaining. Yeah, I agree. Um, but again, I mean, I, no one was really craving a remake to Roadhouse. So like, this is it's very interesting that this is like what I was actually surprised. Like I said, I do love the the fun era of his career, but it seems like a really weird project for Jake Gyllenhaal to get involved with. But like, whatever. I mean, he 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 really went all in. He really really wanted to do it, and was really uh, I guess uh, integral in getting Conor McGregor in it too. Hmm. Uh, so there's you know there's that. Um, uh, the I guess the, the big issue that's going on with the movie now is that Jake Gyllenhaal and Doug Liman uh, really wanted this to be a theatrical release, and okay. um, and then um, at the time when they set this up um, with MGM Studios, it was supposed to be, but then MGM uh, got oh, swallowed up by got swallowed up by you know Prime Video, and right. Jeff, and and I, I guess they did screen this movie for Jeff Bezos. Uh, to encourage them to release it theatrically, and he still was like, "Nope, straight to streaming uh, on Prime Video on March 21st." Uh, the movie's supposed to have its premiere at the South by Southwest uh, Film Festival, um, but Doug Liman is boycotting it because, uh, okay, as what he signed up for, what was promised to him was a movie that would have a theatrical release and he released a statement. I don't have it here, but I have the gist of it where he was basically saying that some of these streamers that say they support theatrical movies really don't. And he really kind of threw Amazon prime, prime prime video, Amazon studios under the bus for that uh, Mm. saying, saying that they kind of bait and switched him on what their intentions were with roadhouse. Um, You know, after I watched the trailer, I was like, I don't see why they would want to release this theatrically. It seemed like it would do well with like the dude crowd. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't seem like something that looked like it would flop. <laughs> but no, um, but it, it's coming out in a packed March. So I'm thinking maybe they just didn't think it would be worth the promo money. I mean, March is swamped. All four trailers were breaking down today are March releases. Yeah. Um, so that maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know if I really expect Jeff Bezos to have accounted for, you know, the month of March and theatrical releases, yeah. but maybe I'm not giving him enough credit. Um, I, you know, I can respect Doug Lyman for sticking to his guns and going so far as to boycott the release of his own movie, Take Stones. So good for him. I completely agree. I, I kind of forgot about the whole Amazon Studios absorbing MGM. I think that's yeah. a really bad thing for the future of, you know, in the, and just the nature of movie studios. I We're heading every year, it seems we're getting closer and closer to like more of a, a monopoly on 
film production, right. and I don't like that. We've seen that with um, what did uh, HBO also get absorbed by? Oh, what was that deal like there? Something. Warner so Brothers like they, and HBO merger. Warner Brothers, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. like and then it became like Warner Brothers Discovery, and then like yeah, there's like um, yeah. yeah, it's like a Disney yeah. buying Fox in the last few years. Like I, and, I think this uh, is uh, like a, a bad uh, omen. Also, rumors that Paramount and Warner Brothers could eventually merge one day. Like that, it, this is what we're kind of coming. Yeah. It seems like they, and I don't want that because because well, like you know, no. I, well, the interesting thing, interesting is, is that like. People have talked a lot about the Disney Fox deal where they acquired 20th Century Fox. And a lot of people think that that deal in the long term wasn't really good either because, like, they don't think Disney completely cares for what is coming out of the 20th Century brand of, you know, after they absorbed it. And they, I mean, I think that you lose a lot when these companies uh, come together like that. Mm-hmm. And so I, I actually do respect what Doug Diamond is doing because especially if like I can totally see them being like oh yeah this is like we're going theatrical that's what we were that's the intention behind it this is what, how we're going to release it and then completely you know changing that last minute I can totally right. see them doing it and um and uh, James Hall wasn't happy about this either he I mean I don't know I don't think he's boycotting the movie but I do know <laughs> that he was not thrilled that um that this was just going straight to prime and you know and the thing is like Amazon has done theatrical and Prime, and on their they they released Saltburn in theaters first before they put it on Prime. So they right. they're very capable of doing that. Um, I, I the only thing I can think of is like if it maybe isn't good. I mean, they they screened it and maybe and Jeff Bezos was like, nah, we'll just release it on on the streaming platform. But even like bad movies do on theater, so it's like you know they could have given it a shot. I don't know, uh, but I wouldn't it, necessarily take. Jeff Bezos' opinion on it, whether a movie's good or bad or not either. Not I yeah. would just expect him to shamelessly <laughs> promote his studio's movies, but um, not that I anticipate this movie's going to be very good. But, I mean, I, I agree. I think it could be a good, entertaining popcorn flick. I, I certainly won't be yeah. judging it as I would, like, a movie like Saltburn, like you just mentioned. But, right. I don't know. Again, I think this movie just would have been so much better, and, like, I could have endorsed it if it wasn't a needless it's remake. It could have been... Again, even it's not like Roadhouse itself is that original of a premise. Like this could easily have yeah. been, you know, it being 35 years later, you can rework that that plot, add in yeah. a few new details like they've done with the MMA angle, and then call it something yeah. else. I think that would have been way yeah. better, but oh well. Yeah. Well, you'll be getting that movie on March 21st uh, on yes. Prime, guys, on theaters. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I looked it up earlier and I see March 8th is the answer that I got for the release. So where um, where did you get March 21st from? Oh, so the so the world premiere is scheduled for March eighth at that's South by Southwest. So that's where they're oh, doing the world premiere. I and see. And it will be okay. released on released on Prime Video on March twenty first. Okay, nice. Well, that changes things. That's great. So yeah, again, a, a stacked March. Have that to look forward to. I guess if that's the right wording. I honestly think that I am less likely to see it now that it's going straight to Prime. I don't really watch a lot of Prime originals. I think I would have yeah. at least maybe if it was a slow month, might have gone to see it. In yeah. theaters, but anyway, um, sort of in a different approach here, um, a comedy release that's also coming out in March. There was a trailer drop for a movie that I had heard nothing about until <laughs> and oddly dropped. enough on Prime Video, too. It's another oh, Amazon, is it another, Prime? yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. My goodness. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ricky Sinicki, uh, again, a movie that I otherwise <laughs> on paper doubt I ever would have really like given the time of day. I gotta say, this trailer kind of caught my interest i like the premise of it i haven't really seen or heard of any movie go for something like this before and i like uh the talent involved what did you think of the trailer i thought the trailer was funny um and this is uh peter uh apparently is directing this uh who you know is known for back in the day like doing like stuff like dumb and dumber and shallow how me myself and irene so like there's something about mary as well uh, so like co- very big like comedic uh, director who kind of pivoted and did, pivoted a bit and did Green Book and, and you know did like something more dramatic, uh, and you know, but now he's back to kind of like a return to form I guess like doing uh, a style of comedy that he was known for back in the day. Right. Um, I like the, the talent involved seems fun too. We got Zac Efron, John Cena, Jermaine Fowler, Andrew Santino, Lex Scott, Davis, and William H Macy. Um, the plot does it is pretty interesting. Um, 
So Ricky Snooky is the name of an imaginary character invented by three long-term friends as someone to blame for their misbehavior over the past two decades. When their partners become suspicious and demand to meet Snooky, they decide to hire a wash-up actor to bring the character to life. Um, yeah, I thought it looked funny. And I actually like Zach Efron in comedy, too. I know it's funny. We were just talking about like him and Iron Paul. And, <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, how good he is that? How good that you show that he's a great dramatic actor, too. But I... I do remember when I saw Neighbors, and I didn't know that he could be funny, and uh, he's hilarious in that movie. Like he has really. I good just rewatched Neighbors talk. actually not long ago, and he had me busting the gut at a few different points. He is, I think, he can really work both sides of the spectrum between comedy and drama. And I gotta say, I generally, it's Dirty Grandpa being another great example of his comedic chops. I find him funny. He's got good comedic timing. Um, and yeah. I like John Cena in this role. He had a couple lines in the trailer <laughs> that actually had me laughing, even though I just thought I would find this dumb. <laughs> I yeah, see yeah. the airport when he's like cleaning <laughs> urinated his pants and they, yeah, like, yeah. dude, he goes, no, don't worry. It's not what it looks like. It's just piss. <laughs> it's like, <that's, laughs> that actually got yeah. a pretty good laugh out of me. So I guess I, I wouldn't have thought much about this movie on paper, but convincing trailer. I can't, I can't remember the name. Um, there's an actor in this movie and I got to look him up. He's like one half of the the Bad Friends podcast with Bobby Lee, and he was just in um, he's been, he was in Beef actually. He's got a recurring a small role in Beef, which I'm also currently watching, and I can't remember his name. Uh, he's like a uh, redheaded actor. He's hilarious. Oh, it's not, that's Andrew Santino. Yeah, is that his name? Okay, yeah, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he's quite funny, and so yeah. I haven't seen he's him. In a, the role he's, this he has big. some really funny stand up <clears throat> uh, stuff. He is actually really funny. Uh, so yes, that's about. right. Yeah, yeah, he's really funny in that. I actually like some of his uh, stand-up stuff. Yeah, this looks—I haven't this seen stand-up, but I would. This looks actually fun. I mean, again, I wonder—I wonder if this would have worked in theaters instead of just going straight to Prime. I but, think uh, it was, yeah. But um, also, uh, speaking of comedic chops, John Cena is also really funny. Like uh, yeah. in general, I think he has really good comic timing too, and he kind of John Cena is one of those wrestlers turned actors that really leaned into what works for him, and he really is good at like just not taking himself too seriously and just kind of playing stuff for laughs more than being serious. I'll give so you that. I, I, <laughs> was he, that, he, was that like me, a light compliment? Like, I'll give you yeah, that, I guess. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. I, I couldn't picture him doing anything like too seriously dramatic, but I got to give yeah. it to him. He sticks to what he's good at, and uh, I can appreciate that. I know he had that like that uh, action hero stint in like the 2000s and 2010s that I feel like he's mostly yeah. left behind except for like, I guess Peacemaker would be an example, but yeah. still a, yeah. more of a comedic action hero role. Right. And I think, yeah, uh, with a good direct, with good direction, good writing, he, he has uh, some good moments. Some, he, he can be yeah. funny. So yeah, he looked great in that. Um, I, I, I would be inclined to check this out uh, if the circumstances are right. And that yeah. is releasing. It looks like, unless I'm wrong again, <laughs> I think I have March 7th <laughs> as a release. Yeah, yeah. No, you, got, you got it. There we go. You got it. On Prime right. Video, uh, so I'll check that one out when it comes out, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, so our uh, next uh, trailer, um, <laughs> Sydney Sweeney having a moment. She's in a lot of stuff this year, I guess. <laughs> I just she's recently, a busy gal just, right now. Uh, just recently, she's in a lot of stuff. We, you know, uh, of course, you know her from like Euphoria. She was on the first season of White Lotus. Uh, she uh, was just in. in she is just in anyone but you, which kind of proved that romantic comedies can make money. Still, uh, that did very yep. well. Uh, uh, actually, it's a web. Slow, she's coming what, out in. What, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That she, was and, that's a, and, and that's a movie that she's in. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, good for her. I, I hope it does well <laughs> for her. <laughs> um, and and then she's also in this uh, new horror movie called Immaculate, which uh, dropped a trailer. Um, the premise of it is a devoutly religious woman named Cecilia is offered a role at an illustrious convent in the Italian countryside. Her seemingly picture perfect new home is soon revealed to hold horrifying secrets. Um, I this was encouraging them. I got I didn't like love the trailer, but it is a neon release, which kind of makes me like, oh, well, that might it could be good. Um, okay, it, but but it, but it feels like almost every other horror movie that deals with this subject matter a bit like yeah. it looks like it looks like like more the same uh, so that was the vibe after i watched the trailer i was like oh that could have been any other movie that looked like this with that very similar plot Agreed. Uh, so but again she seems like she is doing well in the trailer like she it looks like another good uh turn for her uh like we well, said here's have, here's having the a moment. thing i 
I, I actually come to think of it, I haven't seen any like straight up Sydney Sweeney performances beyond some scenes from Euphoria that I actually think she does well in for the character that she's cast as. I'm yeah. a little bit on the other side of the fence here where I was down for the trailer, derivative as it may be from several other horror movies. There's enough like disturbing imagery in here that I think it might be up my alley. Yeah. I, I, like you mentioned, it being a neon produced movie. They are usually a pretty hit studio, like A24. I, I, I consider them like partner studios. Um, yeah. But I was, other than like too many revealing jump scares, um, I was more on board for the concept of the movie in the trailer versus Sydney Sweeney's performance in the trailer. That's not to say that I'm not like, I, I'll check her out and see and make an assessment after I see it. But like, she didn't really sell me. I wouldn't be watching this for her necessarily as I would be for like the premise of the movie. But I have right. heard both. I've heard mixed things, like a little bit of both of what we both had to say about her uh, online. Once this trailer dropped, I was l watching a couple like blind reactions and some people yeah. were saying, I'm in this for Sydney Sweeney. I don't care much for the trailer, uh, but they want to see her in a horror movie, which I can get behind. I I'd like to see her in that. Anything other than like a unintentionally scary performance like Madam Web. <laughs> um, but and then I've heard some people say like I like the trailer, um, but I'm not necessarily seeing it for Cindy Sweeney, and that's kind of the camp I fall in. But I'd be yeah. interested to see how she does with this sort of material. I don't think that she's a bad actress by any means. Just um, I gotta see more of her work before I really have an opinion. Yeah, she's not a bad actress. But I remember so I because I've watched all of you for you. She's she's great, and, and like she, she looks great in that show. And she's definitely season two is like. Yeah, her time to shine in that she had a lot mm -hmm. more to do, and her character goes through a, a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> and but I remember when I think we, we talked about it when we both had watched the official trailer for anyone but you, and I think we both kind of felt bad being like, All right, Glenn Powell seems really funny in this, but there's something not quite convincing about her. Like, I wasn't like getting the right. vibe that, like, oh, she's gonna be so funny in this. Like, I was like, I just didn't I agree, pick yeah. up on it, and like. And this is coming from me too. I like, I've seen her in stuff that I enjoyed, and I think she's good. But I watched that trailer, and I was like, oh, maybe like comedy is another thing. But you know what? People have seen that movie and they've enjoyed it, so I don't, uh, I don't know really. Well, she but... she went as far as to actually be bitten by that spider in that. Oh movie. yeah, you see <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, I gotta give props to her for going that far with that. I would never in a million years be in that situation. So I respect her to an extent, without a doubt. Yeah, I gotta yeah. I gotta shout out my, my buddy David, uh, who I went to middle school with. He was on our Halloween four episode yes. briefly in the beginning. Um, I love like he'll just randomly send me messages on Instagram, and sometimes it will be about her, and he's just like, I don't understand the hype. <laughs> I don't get it. I, I get that she's hot, uh, but that's like he doesn't really quite see like why she is suddenly in everything. And I, she really, I it really is like him, she came honestly. out of nowhere where it's yeah. like she went from like girl on euphoria to like every time i was like reading the trades it was like she's got cast in this and she's producing this like she's not yeah and she's also producing too on top of like uh picking up roles and yeah it's like they suddenly have been throwing her in everything um i yeah i kind of i guess i kind of fall on that i mean because she is good on euphoria right but right that I, mean I don't that, like, she, she yeah but i don't get like, where yeah i don't yeah. get where all of a sudden it's just like wow like she's a she's a new it girl I, mean, she's, I, guess. I think she's the kind of like flavor of the month or at least the quarter in the sense that like Jenna Ortega was like last year. She's just having her moment where she was yeah, yeah. and everything and it'll probably slow down. She, fun fact about her. I actually, she uh, threw the opening pitch of a baseball game I was at a couple summers ago, which was pretty cool. Oh really? Nice. Um, yeah. But like you're like, even movies aside, she's been promoted by like, she was in a big series of Ford commercials that I kept seeing to the point where I yeah. was kind of annoyed. And it's like, like she was in like a Rolling Stones music video recently too. Yeah, like yeah, like, that's right. Yeah. She was. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I feel like there is su there is um such thing as, I don't know if like too much of a good thing is the right Over thing here, like, overexposure. Overexposure, overexposure, exactly. And I feel like yeah. I'm getting that from her where it's like I am not judging her on her acting merits. More so I am like seeing her and everything. I'm like, why? <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know who went through you know who went through this in a similar way and she had to go away for a little bit so we you know they can remember like why they liked her jennifer yeah. lawrence was like this too jennifer lawrence is like this and i kind of felt like like she was at a point where like she was in everything now jennifer lawrence is incredibly talented i'm not saying that she's right. a bad actress by any means but there was a period where she was just in everything and right. she legit and then, then she, she legit took a break for a little bit yeah yeah and then you know came back and did causeway and then she did no hard feelings but she did take a break 
And I, um, not saying that I hope that we that people will feel like Sydney Sweeney is overexposed. It's just like, again, like I, I, like there's a period where I was like, I would just open the trays. I was like, oh, they cast for something yeah. else. <laughs> like, all right, all right. And everything these days, it seems. And but- by the way, uh, for all for all the people who are breaking out from Euphoria, like you know, we got Zendaya, her Jacob Elordi, they are they're still writing season three, and I know there's supposed to be a time jump. I'm just wondering. If they have to make sure that these actors have the time to do it because they are picking yeah. up projects left and right. Uh, so um, we'll see how see how that comes together, I guess. But yeah, yeah, and, and everything. I mean, I get it. she's she's a gorgeous girl, and I'm and I get it I, mm-hmm. from, on some level. But it's right. Yeah, I just I was like I was like, what did she do? Just be like she's on everyone's radar now. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. She's got the the it girl charm, I guess. But I'm interested, and I commend her for breaking out into like a different avenue, like going down the horror route. I think that's great. Yeah. So interested to see how she does in Immaculate, which looks like it comes out March 22nd. And yep. another, release? Mar- another March release, guy. Uh, theatrical, nice. yes. Nice. Oh, this okay, one is great. Uh, other ones we're talking about. Finally, a theatrical release. <laughs> Yeah, geez. Which brings us to our last trailer reaction. Uh, uh, I don't know what your thoughts are. I don't think I think we kind of fall. It seems like we both are in the same boat with this one. I don't know. We haven't really chatted this much before, I don't think. Um, but uh, Ghostbusters Frozen uh, Empire, what do you think? I, so, I mean, I, I, I spoke on this before we started recording. Um, right. I like the original Ghostbusters. It's, it's good. It's part of growing up. <laughs> For right. a lot of us. Um, that being said, I am not uh I don't worship at its altar like other people in my generation that think it's like the best things in sliced bread. I don't know. <laughs> it's right. like it's fine, it's entertaining. I I I, mean, I yeah, I don't it's not like I don't like it, but it mm-hmm. one from all a lot of the movies that came out during that period, like, like 84, that you grew up with in the 80s and watching them in like t- into the 90s and stuff like that. I've I I've watched it, but I've never was one to like give it repeat viewings like oh i love it i love it it was like back to the future if i had to name like an 80s movie that that movie's like that for me okay but ghost but ghostbusters never was and so and then ghostbusters 2 is just like not nearly as good as the first one is just there and they didn't even want to make ghostbusters 2 like they that was kind of like yeah. this one made money and they kind of forced them all to kind of do it and right. and then of course uh we got that the female one which is I, oh, I think boy. unfair unfairly kind of rake through the coals though because of having an all female cast like like fans were hating on it before they even saw a single frame of the movie, so that mm-hmm. part wasn't necessarily fair, uh, but also wasn't great either though. On top of that, yeah. um, and then I know they did the whole like nostalgia thing with Ghostbusters Afterlife, and I think it's cool that Ivan Reitman's son directed it, so that was cool that he that. that that had a familial connection to it. I saw it again, entertaining, fine in the moment, but I was not, I wasn't riding that nostalgia wave like everyone else was. Okay. And so with this one, I feel the same way <laughs> after I watched the trailer. I was like, I don't need more Ghostbusters. And okay, interesting. It, lo- it looks like they're having fun. I mean, I like Paul Rudd, and I think it's cool that I think the one thing that I do think that works in his favor and like it works in Afterlife's favor was a combination of the old and the new but having mm. like you know what you what you know the original cast and stuff from ghostbusters and bringing them in with like a younger generation and also newer actors too that kind of have a blending of those two worlds that that's that's cool that they made it work i just i just never the ip has never been something that's i that never been like a part of my yeah, yeah like and i feel bad because like a lot of people will, if you sell someone that you think ghostbusters is like just okay They'll fight you, man. <laughs> I, I've literally <laughs> never seen a single Ghostbusters property movie. Never played a game. Oh. I've never interacted with Ghostbusters. It's never appealed to me. I mean, do I think it's probably a timeless 80s classic? I'm sure it has its merits, but like it's yeah. nothing about it has never really appealed to me to go back and see. I'm sure I will eventually see the first one. I don't have any interest in any of the subsequent movies, but to say I've seen the first one, I feel like I need to at some point. But even like watching this trailer for Frozen Empire, I, a like I wasn't really impressed with the earlier trailer that we got last year. Yeah. Um, seeing like they're not even like like they're bringing back like some of the famous like monsters slash ghosts from the original one yeah. with like that that green slimy looking oh, one, slimy. And the yeah, yeah, marshmallow puff man. Yeah, like, yeah. At what point? Like it just seems like such a shameless 
creatively bankrupt property here like are is this really necessary like i i think from what i from the little i do know about afterlife it seems like it didn't borrow too much from like the first one other than like you know the property itself but right um it seems like it went a more original direction than this one seems to be going i could be wrong about that but i, I don't know something about this this new trailer seeing the it's definitely leaning heavy into the nostalgia and the the familiarity from the original and i on a movie that I already don't care enough about it being made and it, it being like a shameless uh, reboot, requel sort of trend. I just think yeah. I have no excitement for this movie. I, but then again, I'm not a Ghostbusters fan by any means. So this means nothing. Um, if fans are happy about it, I'd be curious to see what they think about it, especially fans, diehards of the original 80s. And the second one came out in the 90s or was it also later 80s? Uh, uh, the second one came out in 89, the same summer as Batman. And oh, wow. It got, and it got his ass kicked by Batman. That was like a, okay. that was like Rightfully a big so, I was like, sure. That was one of the big box office stories from that summer. There was a lot that came out. And it, I mean, they, they admit that Ghostbusters 2 was more of like, hey, that first one made money. The studio really wanted them to make another one. And all the creators behind it, like Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, and all them didn't really want to do it. It was like kind of like they begrudgingly came up with an idea for Ghostbusters 2. And when you're watching it, it's just like it feels more like a rehash of the first one, but not as good. And, <laughs> and but, you know, but like I said, there are people that worship at the altar at Ghostbusters and are like so excited to get another one. Um, I just didn't feel anything when I watched the trailer. I, I mean, I like I said, I do feel like a betray my generation by not loving it. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, it's just not for well, you're me. You're not alone. Um, but if anyone's curious about what this is about, uh, in Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, the Spengler family decides to leave Somerville, Oklahoma, and go back to where it all started, the iconic New York City Ooh. firehouse, and <laughs> help the original <laughs> Ghostbusters, who develop a top-secret research lab to take busting ghosts to the next level but when the discovery of an ancient artifact unleashes an evil force ghostbusters new and old destroying forces to protect their home and save the world from a second ice age that even sounds Jesus dumb as, sound I, as, I, as, as i was reading it i was like oh that, that does not fun at all <laughs> back where it all started how many times have you seen that done <laughs> in movies like it just oh my god do anything else yeah. anyway i'm glad um, we both feel the same way about that <laughs> uh yeah uh and uh, Gil Keenan is actually directing this one. Jason Reitman is not directing it, but he did co-write it with Gil Keenan. Uh, I'm trying to see what else Gil Keenan has done. Oh, he did Monster House. Oh, wow, I actually like that movie. He did okay. Monster House in 2006, and then he also did. Ooh, he also did the Poltergeist remake in 2015. Ooh. <laughs> so, no, no, ooh, bad. Um, but yeah, you got you got you got you know Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, and Andy Potts are coming back from Ghost, from Ghostbusters. They were all in the original movie, and then you got more of the new cast: Paul Rudd, Carrie Coon, Finn Wolfhart, McKenna Grace, Celeste O'Connor. Uh, you know, and then they added uh, Camille and Johnny into the project as well, and Pat Oswalt. I mean, again, I mean, I also I find it hard to like not like anything. I mean, I can I can probably enjoy Paul Rudd on like in like mediocre stuff so i'm like yeah he's cool he's like a reliable presence and he and and stuff like this i just uh i i don't even know if i would even like rush out to see it i was like if if i heard great things about it but i'd be hearing great things about it for people that love ghostbusters exactly so i, won't know how I can't really that. take take the praise with a grain of salt i think it'll be even that i don't know if this even appeals to the long time ghostbusters yeah. fans i don't really know i don't really know or associate with any big Ghostbusters <laughs> thing. No one really in my, yeah. but in the sense that like, I don't really know anybody that's singing Ghostbusters praises. I don't know anybody that like is talking about that movie that it doesn't really resonate with my generation as much. I don't think like my friends that may have seen it have probably seen the original like once, but I don't yeah. know. Um, yeah. And, you know, and the grand pantheon of eighties movies, I've never understood how it's so like highly regarded. <laughs> I've, I've never understood it but i mean like and, I, and you and you would think because i grew up i mean i i would have been primed to have grown up with it and been like yeah definitely i love that i love that movie you would think i probably like after it was over just replayed it again and watched it again but no i never never have <laughs> and fine in the moment just you no know, never stayed with me the way it has with other, every other person from my generation interesting and but, yeah yeah, well, that yeah, summarizes is... our news. Um, I guess the next thing we have to look forward to is our box office prediction for Matthew Vaughn's next movie, Argyle, which opens up, I think it's February 4th. That's this this weekend, the, the Friday. Yeah, the Friday, yeah. 
Yeah. And or second. Or second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Se- oh, second. Right. Yes, second. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's a little early. Is that a Thursday? Uh, like, is it? Because tomorrow, it like as it was, what the 29th today, 30th, 31st. Maybe this is earlier in the week than I thought. I, I, I was like, I was like, how many days are in January? <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-one. Sometimes I. Sometimes I uh, no, it, it, it's a Friday. February second. Oh, yeah. Okay, the second. Okay, I thought the yeah. fourth was a Friday. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at his filmography right here, and I've actually seen more of Matthew Vaughn's movies than I realized. Um, I'm a big fan of his debut, Layer Cake, from 2004. Have you seen that with uh, Daniel Craig? Yeah, it's actually really good. Kick Ass is the first movie I know him for from 2010. That movie's great too. And then um, I haven't seen X Men First Class. I know he's really. I so didn't realize it was the only one he did though. I thought he would. Yeah. A couple. I um, think he. Really, I think they Singer, wanted him. But, yeah. yeah, they wanted him involved in Days of Future Past, but they but then it felt more Who important did? to bring Brian Sing- Brian Singer. Was back. it Brian Singer that did that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then but his first two first Kingsman movies great. I've seen. Um, but not yeah, his he, most he, recent one. He mostly has most more, at least as entertainment value, more hits and misses. Um, yeah. Um, but what we learned before we started recording this episode, because I had no idea how much the movie costs to make, uh, it's a two hundred oh, right. million dollar movie. Um, oh boy! And I, I would have never guessed that uh, from the trailers we've seen so far. And I think we actually was like, were we talking on the show before where? I don't know. Maybe it wasn't us, but I can't remember because I've been on a couple other shows talking about this movie too. Um, nothing about this really grabs me, trailer wise. I haven't been me like, uh, I, I, it, it's like maybe it'll be okay, but I, <laughs> and the cast is great. I mean, I like it has a really good ensemble cast. I mean, I'm like, it really does. Yeah, I mean, Henry Cavill, Bryce Dallas Howard, Sam Rockwell, Brian Cranston, Catherine O'Hara, Dua Lipa. <laughs> okay, her too. Uh, Ariana DeBose. John Cena and Samuel L. Jackson. That is a great lineup. I don't know why I'm not stoked or, or excited to see it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing about this trailer intrigued me. I like even to the the cast ensemble, like sort of portrait that is like, I feel like on every single movie these days, I just don't really like. I don't like, it didn't really grab me, like the sort of absurd humor that like his kingsman movies really have that work in the context of those movies i feel like this is just like a different shade of his kingsman movie and i don't really feel like it's something that like really i wanted to see from him because i like like i said i love his filmography for the most part Uh, the ones i've seen he has a lot of success under his belt but like there's something about this movie that is feel like it's leaning into the silly absurdist side and that's very much not me not what appeals to me and i think i'm sort of getting a lot of that from what i've seen like the even the whole like cat being involved in like a lot of these like silly sequences i just find dumb yeah. and it's it's actually his own cat too which is kind of interesting like it's actually wow, matthew vaughn's cat which is neat but <laughs> yeah. i don't know there's nothing really about this movie that really intrigues me i don't know how this movie is 200 million dollars other than that mo- most of that must just go to the stunts and the cast but geez and yeah. uh two hours um, and 19 minutes too that's a length yeah movie. that was another thing i saw that was like i was like man that, that doesn't need to be that long um <laughs> Um, I guess the one thing that might bail them out is that this is it's being released by Universal Pictures. It's also an Apple original film, though, that will be on Apple TV Plus at an undetermined date. So I guess we're in a similar situation as Killers of the Flower Moon, which also had a huge budget and didn't really return that budget theatrically, but it might be worth it to Apple to invest in it. Same thing with Napoleon as well. Um, but I don't know, $200 million, even, even if it is like going to eventually be thrown on apple tv plus it just seems like a lot for this kind of movie i, I, I know really, it, it absolutely uh, does. like on, on a on an unproven ip uh <laughs> that there much you money. Go. that's a great um, point all right so the tracking on this one um is at right now 23 million dollars opening weekend which is not, oh not a great God. start not that a great not, not, not a great start <laughs> so this is definitely losing money even if it goes above tracking i can't see this movie <laughs> really doing very solidly in the box office that's a shame i suppose but um okay tracking at 23 yeah i don't know is it really up against much this weekend i think there wasn't really much released last week no, is still I number think, one uh, in the box office yeah we'll talk a little bit about that uh after this uh because it was a very dismal box office weekend yeah um yeah I, I don't think it is opening against anything so there's that and then we haven't had like a really yeah, we haven't had a new wide release in uh, a couple weeks, so that 
does work in its benefit, I guess. I guess. Um, I don't know. You want to go first? Do you want? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm gonna put it at like a nice twenty-two. I guess it'll come in, which is technically below tracking, but I think it's gonna be more like on par. I think that's low, considering yeah. like the advantages it does have going into the weekend with not really much competing with it. It's got a great ensemble cast from a proven director who people love. I don't think yeah. the time of year is great for this movie. Um, so that's that's kind of my justification. Twenty-two. And I think something about it is like so niche and like kind of offbeat that I'm trying to figure out who it totally appeals to, even though it has like a great cast like that. Like it's like right. when people are watching that trailer, they're like, uh, is this for me? I don't know. You know, <laughs> so I, uh, Henry Cavill's haircut in this movie is enough to really <laughs> keep me away. Yeah. Kill box office. Um, yeah. I'm going to go with 20. I'm gonna okay. Go blow. I'm going to go blow a little bit lower. You know what else I find interesting is um, the tagline above Argyle on this uh, poster is from the twisted mind of Matthew Vaughn. I don't feel like he's really earned that. I don't really know earned why that that's the <laughs> adjective they're using. I find that I remember <laughs> actually that stood out to me the first time I saw the trailer in the theaters. It like opened with that, and I'm like, that is just not the word I would use to describe Matthew Vaughn. But okay, yeah. there we go. All right, so we got 22 from you. Uh, 20 from me. Um, just because we didn't have a new show, uh, we did the Oscar nominations. We didn't get to tell you um, uh, about the second weekend of Mean Girls. Uh, the second weekend of Mean Girls made it was 11.7 million dollars in the second weekend. It had like a 59 percent drop, so it was very front loaded. Um, mm. But I guess I predicted you said 16. That's right, and I believe um, you said 18. Then, uh, yeah. So um, at, in week one. For our going up against each other tally, we we called it a draw because it was I got the three day right, and then but you were closer to the four day, right. um, so so we so we both took that one, uh, but with this one I believe since uh, I went I went lower right than you did, uh, so I think you said uh, eighteen. Oh, I eighteen. Okay, in, then you win. Came in, uh, let me double check. Uh, I didn't write it down, but I think we oh, were both oh, so wrong. Um, <laughs> so whoever is whoever's yeah. the closest. To- yeah, you would come in at 18 and I'd come in with 16, but 59% drop. Right. I don't think either of us were thinking it would be that low. Yeah, but I guess you technically win that one because you were closer to the $11.7 million. Closer. So, uh, None of us are really close, so, but sure, I'll take so, it. <laughs> so so we'll call you we'll call you a win on that. So we'll, we'll be tallying on uh, this throughout the year for the box office. So one was a tie. This one, uh, Jackson got. And then we'll see who's going to be the closest for uh, Argyle. And then we'll also get your predictions from our socials for Argyle as well. Um, and just quick box office news. Yes, Mean Girls is still the number one movie in America for for the third week in a row. Um, but this is a very low grossing box office weekend. It was number one, six point nine million dollars, forty percent drop from last week. Uh, it barely came out ahead of The Beekeeper, which was six point six million dollars, twenty two percent drop. That movie uh, for Jason Statham is getting. A lot of good word of mouth, and it's actually doing pretty well. I had no desire to see it, but I heard it's good from other people who have seen it. Uh, I just David Ayer directing. Yeah. I did not know that until yeah, I don't know, a week or two ago. Yeah, so I mean, I'm happy for him because I know he's still that whole Suicide Squad thing is still like a, a tough uh, topic <laughs> yeah. for him. So good for him. Um, but yeah, uh, Mean Girls is still successful in the end. Though it's like a 36 million dollar movie. It's made 83 million dollars worldwide, 60 million uh, so far domestically. The Beekeeper, $41.5 million uh, here so far. I think, believe it's a $45 million movie, but it's made $103.4 million worldwide. Nice. Um, uh, Wonka is still in the top five of the box office. It has made $194.9 million domestic and $552.2 million worldwide. That is, it clearly was the biggest movie from the Christmas holiday uh, corridor, and it's still in the top five. I think mostly because there's like a lack of content right now <laughs> yeah. uh, Seems um, that way. um and you know to throw no more uh kudos to anyone but you uh it's still getting good word of mouth it has made 71 million dollars domestically on a 25 million dollar budget and 126.4 million dollars worldwide it is the highest grossing r-rated rom-com since bridget jones's uh baby i believe in 2016 or 28 i'm trying to figure out where that came out but that's how that's how rough it's been for uh r-rated romantic comedies but but this one has this is one that had legs like i remember when i called it wrong because they had a really low opening weekend that 
uh, the weekend came out in December and I thought it was going to be a miss, but people found it eventually and it's got good word of mouth. And, and that is the concept. And I guess just star part. I think that just proves that people like Sydney yeah. Sweeney and Glenn Powell together. So I guess so for them and i yeah i think that's kind of all little box office updates uh you know what's funny is that night swim is already on uh yeah uh, geez. PO, the same month PO, it came out in the theater yeah oh. and i and i got sent the copy of it and i was like i need i just i want to watch it so i can like share and how violent no. it is with you <laughs> watch something else that you need from last year please yeah, yeah. there's so many <laughs> after going through our top 10 lists Spend that, <laughs> spend those at uh, that hour and forty five minutes or whatever, any on anything else. But I get, I get the vibe, I get the feeling of wanting to watch something to, to shit on it. But yeah. God, you'll just regret it. You're like, don't waste your time. <laughs> don't waste your time. I'm, I'm telling you this as a friend. But <laughs> thank you. I but if you it. do end up doing it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I think that's uh, that everything. Back that's everything. Time. Yes, your turn to sign us off, and this has oh, been one forty eight. <laughs> Episode 148 of Back to the Blockbuster. Thank you guys for uh, listening to a little quick rundown of uh, the weekly news and box office. Like we said, we will be taking your box office predictions and uh, throwing them up on our stories and then sharing uh, your predictions on our next episode. Um, as always, you can listen to us on anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Good Pods, Spotify, but we really would love for you to listen to us on the Playlist Studios app because they are our podcast network and they are very good to us. And we want to shout them out as much as we can. As always, you can kind of keep up with this, this content as well across all of our socials at Back to the Blockbuster, whether it's X slash Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, soon to be on YouTube as well. We are working that into the mix so you can see our beautiful, handsome faces every week as well. And if you don't want to just listen to us, um, as always, thanks for listening. Uh, we have some great content coming at you uh, in February as well. Uh, anniversary episodes. Uh, it's going to be daunting. They're still starting off kind of like not too daunting yet. Mm. But man, once we once we get to March, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> getting busy. It's, a, it's getting it's getting busy. But we're really looking forward to uh, doing those, and we have some fun uh, guests coming on at least one of those anniversary episodes in February. And I do want to mention uh, the deep dive spinoff uh, too as well. Uh, I recorded a Suspiria episode with a uh, fun uh, podcast uh, as well. And that'll be out very, very soon. Uh, Ty will be joining me on, this is going to be a first for the deep dive, but we are going to go over the oceans trilogy. So oceans 11, 12 and 13 uh, for, for uh, one of our deep dives too. And um, I also have hot fuzz coming up with uh, another uh, Sioux world order uh, podcast that will be, coming out soon as well so that is still going strong and like i said if you guys want to join us on the deep dive just keep sending messages and uh let us know what you want to deep dive and we will love to have you on the show jackson will be on there eventually again uh oh, whenever he whatever whenever he wants to deep dive something uh so yeah but we're looking forward to a lot of great stuff across this show and the main show so we're very excited yeah and that wraps up the month of january we're one month down into 2024 it's been a ride Thank you guys for tuning in each and every week to listen to us chat movies, and uh, we'll be back at you next week. Until then, take care, guys.